What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while. I've been kind of a runt when it comes to making videos, but now that I'm back, hopefully I can get back into that groove of making videos. So yeah, today we'll be covering what if Broly had a twin, the super version. And if you want the Z edition where I can actually make more changes to the story, like the Majin Buu song and all that stuff, leave a like. Let's get this video to like, let's say, 200 likes and I'll do the Z version of it. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's actually get into the what if. This what if takes place five years before the birth of Goku. King Vegeta goes to visit the incubator room and explains how proud he is of his son's power level. Someday, his son will become king and kill those bastards Cold and Frieza. As he leaves, he notices two Saiyan children and angrily asks, why are they in the same room as my son? One of the scientists say that they're the children of another Saiyan called Paragus. These two children both have power levels higher than your son. The one named Broly's power level goes from 920 to 10,000. Meanwhile, the other one named Cumber seems to stay around 10,000. Feeling like these two can someday threaten the royal family, he decides to exile them to a faraway planet called Vampa. Paragus, upon learning that his kids are going to be exiled, he goes to Vegeta and tries to change his mind. They could be great assets to the Saiyan race. King Vegeta, being the prick he is, doesn't change his mind, causing Paragus to go off racing after his kids with the help of Beat. Upon arriving on Vampa, Beat and Paragus still crash, like in canon. After nearly getting killed, they find the children and it turns out that the ship was damaged so they can't leave the planet. Paragus, knowing that he's gotta save food for his kids, still decides to kill off Beat. For the next few decades, Paragus and his sons would spend it surviving and training on Vampa. Broly, being the older one, ends up being more adventurous and more honorable, which leads him to become friends with Ba. While Combur, on the other hand, is more docile and timid, but because they're brothers, they build up this brotherly rivalry. So during their trainings, they would try to outdo each other and prove that they're the stronger one. Usually the one that ends up winning is the one who ends up getting mad first. Because of their little temper tantrums that they throw, Paragus would have to create two collars instead of one. These shock collars wouldn't be as strong as the ones in canon, but they do get the job done. A few decades later, a Frieza ship lands on Vampa. Old man Paragus comes out running, begging them not to leave them on this planet. Obviously, these two soldiers are Chilai and Lemo. And just like in canon, they nearly get killed by that spider creature. However, Paragus calls for his boys, and they come in from different sides, popping that motherfucker. After noticing that the brothers have unreadable powers, Chilai and Lemo are really excited to take them back to Frieza. Who knows, they might get a big reward out of it. For a while, not much changes. The only noticeable change is that Cumber doesn't interact with Chilai and Lemo as much as Broly does. He just kind of sits there not saying anything. Other than that, we can skip straight to when Frieza arrives on Earth. After Paragus gives Vegeta his whole taking revenge on him for his dad's sin speech, he unleashes Broly and Cumber on him. Both of the brothers force Vegeta to go Super Saiyan almost right off the bat. However, it's not long before both of the brothers can catch up to Vegeta. After a bit of being tossed around, Vegeta finally goes God and takes full control of the battle. He kicks Cumber away and punches Broly in the face. As Vegeta charges up a big bang attack, he calls Broly worthless before firing it and engulfing Broly in it. Things go quiet for a moment as Cumber says quietly Broly's name. He then realizes that they might have actually killed his brother. He then starts to scream and go berserk as his power level skyrockets and Broly's does the same. Because of course, Broly hasn't died. The main difference is that Broly goes to, into the Akari slash Wrathful form, while Cumber goes into Super Saiyan, 
and not the legendaries, the, the regular Super Saiyan. Goku finally decides to jump in and tells Vegeta to take care of Broly while he fights Cumber. Vegeta is a little hesitant at first because of his little Saiyan pride stuff, but he eventually realizes that he does need the help. Both of them power up into blue while the brothers rush towards them. Broly's and Vegeta's fight would play out similar to the way it did when he was in his red state. But as the fight drags on, Broly slowly but surely catches up to Vegeta. Meanwhile, Cumber is absolutely destroying Goku. It's basically just like their fight from the original Broly movie. Only Goku has blue hair this time and Broly isn't swole yet. Just like Z Broly, Cumber is sadistic and enjoys torturing Goku. Vegeta decides to evolve his blue form and give Broly a punch strong enough to send him through several mountains. Frieza wanting to give Broly a bit more of a fighting chance, he turns to Paragus. After killing Paragus, Frieza turns to the boys and tells them that he's been killed by a stray key blast. This serves to enrage both of the brothers. Like his younger brother before him, Broly finally achieves Super Saiyan. Not even with their power-ups like Kaioken, Evolution, or Master Blue can either one of them keep up with the Broly brothers. Once they realize that they both can get killed if this fight continues, Goku uses instant transmission to grab Vegeta and then teleport to Piccolo. Piccolo tells him that he's going to have Gohan and the androids on standby in case they need him. After failing the fusion for the first time, Piccolo decides to check up on the battlefield. He sees an enraged Cumber start to brawl with Broly. These two start to duke it out, landing punch after punch after punch, and they destroy the surrounding area because of their battle. This fight goes on for an hour until Gogeta joins the fight. He tries to put an end to their fight because if they continue like this, they're eventually going to destroy the entire planet. Gogeta goes blue immediately and flies between them mid-fight. Broly and Cumber enrage fly at him trying to punch Gogeta, however he dodges and the brothers end up punching each other. The two Broly's then start to go at it again, before Gogeta fires the Kamehameha at Cumber sending him far away. Gogeta and Broly then start to duke it out, somewhat like how they did in canon, before Cumber comes back. He grabs Gogeta by the face and begins to drag him across the floor. On the other side of Earth, Piccolo can sense that Gogeta can only handle one Broly at a time, so he decides to make a few calls. Cumber slams Gogeta down and is about to throw an eraser cannon at him, but Broly stops him by kicking him in the gut. The two brothers then release a shit ton of blast, destroying the area even further before they start to fight again. Gogeta, once he gets his footing back, he goes in to punch Broly away. Broly lands right next to Frieza, who tells him to get up and kill that monkey, monkey. Broly, out of pure rage, grabs Frieza by the tail and starts to smack him on the ground, a la Hulk style. Frieza does manage to break Broly's grasp when he goes golden, however, it's only a temporary advantage as Broly still overpowers him. Before he can kill Frieza, he is kicked in the face. When Broly looks up, he sees Gohan, Piccolo, 17, and 18. Gohan tells Frieza that he really didn't want to save him, but he proved himself useful in the tournament, so I guess he can save him this one time. Frieza says he doesn't need help, especially from a monkey, a slug, and a couple of toasters. Piccolo remarks that they could just let Frieza handle Broly by himself and potentially get killed. Frieza, with fear in his eyes, says, fine, you can, you can fight in my place. Broly comes flying in, dragging Frieza away, with the other four following shortly behind. Meanwhile, chi -Lai and Lemo are rushing outside with the Dragon Balls. When they summon the dragon, chi -Lai takes a moment to think about how she's going to word the wish. However, that moment proves to be deadly as Gogeta's Kamehameha ends up hitting Cumber and sends him into the sun, killing him. She tells Shenron to send Broly and Cumber back to Vampa, unknowing that Cumber is already dead. This means that only Broly gets to go back home, and Cumber dies. Once everything is said and done, Gogeta tells Frieza to get off the planet. He gets back into his ship, no problem. However, he tells one of his grunts to get something from the battlefield before they leave. Not long after, the grunt gets what Frieza wanted, and they leave Earth. A few days later, let's say like maybe a week before the Moro arc happens, Kikano approaches Frieza, and informs him that the DNA that they collected was indeed one of the Saiyans. Frieza with a grin on his face just says, begin the revival process.
And this is where we're going to be leaving it off for now. Like I've said, if you guys want the Z version of this, I'll do it for 200 likes. Get me to 200 likes on this video and I'll do it. So yeah, I didn't change too much about the movie, mainly because Broly doesn't really matter in the moral arc, so I didn't think anything there would change, so I didn't cover it. But now that we have that new Granola arc coming out, I think that that would change, so if I ever do a part two, it's gonna be after the Granola arc, because it's most likely gonna involve Broly, since it involves, you know, someone who got attacked by the Saiyans. But yeah, with that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I can put out more videos by the end of the month. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.